Welcome adores. If your company provides services, it is crucial for you to eventually get paid. Odoo offers several ways to invite your clients for services, and we will explore them in this video. So you can choose between several invoicing types depending on your and your client's business needs. So let's take the example of the Dinosaur Museum, where we provide a range of services such as workshops, team building activities, and more. So for services such as our team building workshops, we invoice clients based on fixed rates. It is the best solution since the workshops follow a designated flow, and then we have all of the materials prepared in advance, and also the amount of time that we spend working on the workshop doesn't really change. Even if we spend an hour more or less here and there, it doesn't matter. So because the price that we charge to the customer will always be the same. Then we also have invoicing based on timesheets, which is very useful if we don't know upfront how long the work on a certain project or task will take. So in this case, uh, we invoice the clients the actual time that we spend working on the project. Um, for the Dinosaur Museum, we invoice some of our more special custom events like this. And then last but not least, we uh, can also invoice clients based on the delivered quantity. So this is a bit similar to fixed price uh, since we charge a specific amount for our services. Uh, but then what we do is we just manually update the amounts that we delivered before invoicing clients. So this is very useful for us uh, in the case of our lectures, for example, where the client may decide that they would like to have more or less sessions during the duration of the project. And then we also have invoicing by milestones, but this is actually something that we'll see in another video. All right, this was a lot, but don't worry, we're going to see it in action just now. So we will start with our sales application and let's take a look at our product. So here you see that we already configured two uh, of our services. And just to make things easier, we actually uh, put the invoicing policy in the name here. So we have our custom events, which are based on timesheets. And then we have the on-site lect lectures, which are based on delivered quantity. Uh, next up, let's create one more service together. We'll call it a uh, team building. And let's put in the title here as well, fixed price. Just to make things clear, of course, you don't have to put the invoicing policy in the, in the name. Let's uh, say that this is a service. And of course, it will be invoiced by fixed price. Uh, and then for the purpose of this video, we will just say that this should create a task in our services project. But of course, if you wanted to, you can configure it um, to match your needs. And then this, uh, we will price it, uh, excuse me, we will decide first that this comes in a 20 hour uh, pack. Oh, a 20 hour pack. That's pretty interesting. How did you set it up? So actually, we, can, we configured our 20-hour packs off screen in the, the units of measure, which you are very welcome to check out our documentation about. But actually, you're right. We could just configure hourly price, and I'm going to do it uh, for this case. So let's just set up hour. And let's say that this is a fixed price surface, and it will cost 40 euros per hour. It's going to be a bit simpler that way. Now, let's see how this works in action. So I'm going to save this. And let's create a quotation for a client that we are often work with, the Diplo High. And let's say that we will uh, sell them our standard uh, team building. Let's say we're going to put 20 hours of that. Again, mirroring our 20 hour pack. Then we're going to add um, 20 hours of custom event organization. So let's say this is for an end of the year school event that we will start working on. And then next up, we'll also add some uh, lectures for the final year. And let's say that we're going to sell five. Let me confirm that. And we see here on our smart buttons that the tasks have been automatically created in my services projects. Let's take a look at them. And the first app, uh, let's say that we're going to start working on our team building workshops. So what happened is uh, the system al automatically allocated 20 hours uh, to this task. But you know what? Let's say that I've actually got a little bit behind, some unexpected events happened, and I spent 25 hours working on this. As soon as I fill in my timesheet, everything becomes red. But you know what? I'll just keep it that way. And Susanna, don't you need to validate those timesheets before we move on? 
Good question. And actually, in this case, um, this is something that depends on the configuration of timesheets in your database. So uh, if you go into your settings, you can specify if you want all of the timesheets to be considered or just the validated ones. So in this case, we will take care of all of our timesheets. We will not specify that we only need validated timesheets. So just something for you to keep in mind. Next up, uh, I will pick our custom event organization task. So again, 20 hours were allocated by default. Uh, as this is what we put on the sales order. But let's say here as well, we ended up working a little bit longer and we spent 25 hours. Again, same thing happens. This goes on red, but we'll just keep it like this. Perfect. And now uh, we also have, of course, our last task, which is based on delivered quantity. So for the on-site lect lectures, we can log a timesheet if we want to, but actually it will not impact our sale sales order, which we will see in a second. And the allocated time, time here as well is zero, though we could add more time, but it will not impact the invoicing. Let me save this real quick. All right, so now that we've locked all of this time, let's go ahead and see how this affected our sales order. I will just use breadcrumbs. And what we see right away is that the amounts, uh, this, the lines that can already be invoiced have turned blue. So you see it right here. Uh, and what's not blue yet is the delivered quantity service. And for that, to, in order to invoice that, all we need to do is just manually uh, fill in the delivered amount. So let's say, you know what, we just decided to uh, do six uh, lectures instead of five in the end. That's it. Now, all of my lines are ready to invoice. So I will click clear the invoice right away. We'll say regular invoice. Here, I could also select a timesheet period that I want to take into account, uh, but I will just leave it empty for now to create the draft. Perfect. And now our invoice is ready. And what, I, what we actually would like to uh, take a look at here is the quantities. So you see that our team building is priced at fixed price of, um, and we agreed for 20 hours. So even though, if you remember, we spent 25 hours we will only be able to invoice the clients for 20 hours since it's a fixed price service. However, for our based on timesheet service, so our event planning, we also initially sold 20 hours, but since this is based on timesheets, the fact that we work 25 hours allows us to invoice the customer for the full amount of 25 hours. And then next up for the based on delivered quantity service, even though initially we thought it would be five, we delivered six, so we are able to invoice the customer for six lectures as well. So we can just confirm this invoice, receive our payment and move on with our day. I hope this helped you a little bit to understand uh, the different invoicing policies, policies in your project. And thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.